Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. O O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Hi, hi everyone. How are you? And how have you been? I know it's been ages. It's been such a very long time. But thank God for this opportunity to be together. How are you this morning? I hope you are up. You are elated. You are ready. Yes, you have everything that you need to have with you for church. That means your Bibles, your notebooks, everything. You have even found uh, that place that you like sitting well, eh? so that you can enjoy a good sermon. And you have space with you so that you can jump, praise the Lord and all. I hope that um, we're in the holidays, right? Yes, uh, the holidays have been nice to you. You're enjoying everything. You're enjoying the time with family. And yeah, you're ready for sermon and service this morning. Are you? Are you? Are you? And so at this moment, i like us to pray so that we can, yes, begin our service today. Okay, uh, kindly asking, get up on your feet wherever you are so that we can pray, hoping that you are up. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name this morning, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful time to be before you, dear God, to be able to learn together, to be able to hear from you. We thank you because you've protected and been with us and you've led us all through to this moment. Our prayer, dear Master, is that, Lord, indeed, as we sit in, O Lord God Almighty, to worship you, to praise you, to magnify you, as we, Lord God Almighty, take time to learn together, mighty Father, as we take time, dear God, to hear from you, speak to us, minister, mold us, dear God, shape us, dear God, instruct us in the way that you would want. We praise you because you are God, and we we thank you because you're going to have a good time in your presence. For all this we pray, trusting and believing, and all God's children said, Amen and Amen and Amen. While you're still standing, I hope you're ready to praise God. I hope you're ready to sing, shout, jump, and clap to God. Are you? Are you? And so if you're ready, allow us to welcome um, the International Christian Center um, worship team to be able to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Thank you.
How was it? I hope you enjoy that time of praising the Lord. I hope you lifted your hands. I hope you did. I, I hope you worshipped God and you enjoyed. So settle down, settle down, settle down. Pick your Bible pens and everything. Yeah, even this moment, get to invite everyone that you are with at home. Yes, just tell them to come over. Yeah, even if you can beckon on your neighbors, have to come over and sit so that we can do this together. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? And so I am elated to be with you this morning to praise and worship God with you, to be able to learn together. And so as we're doing this, we are going to have a time of learning together. And so are you ready? Hoping that you have your Bibles with you. Uh, here, here, picking up your Bibles. Eh? Do you have your Bible with you? I raise it up as mine is, raise up yours. And let's make that declaration that we are so accustomed to doing together. Are you ready? Do you remember it? Three, two, one, go. This is my Bible. It's God's written word. I love my Bible. It's a letter from God to me. As I read God's word today, I pray that you may help me be able to understand that which you have for me. For all this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. And so today, I hope you're ready. Because um, our sermon today says guided by values says what guided by guided by values true and true and true and so um we are learning about values values what are values let's ask ourselves first what are values values are standards or principles that are very important to us eh? and so at this point i like you to ponder do you have values mm -hmm. do you have principles or standards that you hold by that actually guide your behavior that actually guide um your thinking around things do you have those we are saying today that values are like the bank in a river. Uh -huh. Do you know what a bank river is or a river bank is? A river bank are those boundaries that ensure that the river flows where it should flow and it does not go over and basically be able to carry away things. And so we are saying that as is that um, we are taking time to discover the values that we ought to have individually and even as a church is that fine is that fine so the value that you, you should uphold yourself and even the value that you should uphold as a church um kid in icc mombasa and so having said that um we've just defined what values are we've said they are principles or standards and we say that values are like a river bank a river bank are those embankments what are embankments boundaries what are boundaries those things eh, that are against the river some of you can call it um, the beach of a river or something. Rivers don't have beaches. But there are those things that are on the sides of the rivers. Because the rivers are always flowing. That guide the river on where they need to flow through. And so for us, we are saying that boundaries are those standards. Are those principles that guide us in the way that we should walk. And so why do we need values? Somebody will ask themselves, why do we need values? Exactly, why do we need values? And so, here we are saying, number one, I hope you have your pens with you. Number one, values define us. Values do what? Values define who we are. They define us. They explain us. They tell more about us. Values do what? Define us. Is that fine? So, values define us. That is number one. And with that, I would like us to read a portion of God's word. And this comes from the book of Daniel, chapter one. Are you there? Daniel, chapter one, verses... 6 to 17. Yes, Daniel is amongst um, the books in the Old Testament, right after the book of Ezekiel. So I hope you've gotten to Daniel. Have you? Have you? Have you? And so if you have, please, um, let's read this together. Daniel chapter 1, verse 6 to 17. It's quite a text, but we'll go through it um, with some good is. This is what it says. Among these were some from Judah. Who are this? This is a time... Um, in the year uh, of the reign of uh, Joachim as the king of Judah that um, yeah, some young men were picked so that they can be able to study and be taken in um, under the king's um, leadership or rule. Is that fine? And so among this were those young men. So among these young men, this is an addition, from Judah, um, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azaria. The chief official gave them new names to Daniel's name became Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Verse 8. But Daniel resolved, what did Daniel resolve to? Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself. In this way, 
not to file himself in this way. Now, God had caused the official to show favor and sympathy to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men of your age? The king will then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please, test your servant for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and drink, and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food, and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. Verse 14. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished. Mm -hmm. They looked what? They looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away the choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. Verse 17. Now, these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of what? Of all kinds. And so here is a context where young men are picked to be um, in a king's royal program. And so what happens? When you're picked by the king, of course, you're being given the food that the kings eat. So you're, eat, so you're, given, you're being given the royal food and all. But Daniel sought not to defile himself with that food. He actually asked to be given what? Vegetables. Why did he seek not to defile himself? Because he had values. It's actually his values that allowed him not to defile himself with the king's royal food and even to ask for vegetables and water. And it is said, as we've read, that at the end of the time after they were examined, they were looking healthier and far much better than what? Than the other young men they were appointed with. And so it shows you, when you stick to your values, one, your values define you. They define what you stand for. They define who you are and even how and what choices you make. That is number one. Again, two, point number two, you're saying values propel you forward. They propel you. They push you forward. They strive you to go ahead to where you want to be. For example, in this case, because Daniel chose not to defile himself with the king's food, how did they prof how did they propel, how did that value propel him and the others forward? One, at the end of the 10 days, they were healthier and they looked far much better. And you see, for you to be in a king's, prog uh, in a king's program as these ones were, looking healthy and far much better was something to be actually greatly appreciated. Why? Because if you're in a king's program, you will not afford to look like um, you are not with it. Why? Because you had been provided for everything that was under the king for you to be better. And so you see, we are saying point number two, that values propel you forward. Like in this case, for Daniel, the values that he chose to stand for propelled him forward and actually allowed him to look very healthy and very, and very much better than the rest. Point number three says, values attracts God favor. Why? We are saying that also in this reading that we've, 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 we've had, that in verse 17, it said to so this, Four young men, that is Daniel, Mishael, Azariel, Ed, and who? And who? And Hananiah. To these four young men, this is what verse 17 says. God gave them knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. Meaning that values attract God's favor. Yes, when God looks at you as a young boy, as a young girl right there, and he sees that you have values, they attract, those values attract his presence towards you attract his favor towards you. Why? Because God notices that there are important principles or guidelines, standards that you've placed in your life that actually allow you to live in the way that God has called you. And so that is what values does to us. We've said three things. What are they? Values. One, they define us. Two, values propel us forward. Three, values attract God's favor in our lives. Is that fine? Is that fine? And so, we are saying that we are learning about being guided by values. And over this season, we've been learning about the values that we uphold as a church. And so, this, at this point, I would like to ask you, what values do you, th do you think we uphold as Kids Church at ICC Mombasa? What values do you think you uphold? Uh -huh. Share with anyone that you are with right there where you are at. Ask them or share with them what values you think as a church, as Kids Church, we uphold to help you with starters is that we uphold around seven, around 11, 11 values, around 11 values. And we are going to, to go, we are going to go through those just um, in a bit. 
So have you discussed? What values have they told you? Ah, yeah, let's see whether the values they've told you are the same same values that we uphold at ICC Mombasa. And so we are saying at ICC Mombasa, our core values are number one. Number one, true worship. Meaning that the, this value that we as IC Mombasa cho choose to truly worship God. I bet when we started our service, I asked you to prepare for a time of worshiping and praising God. And that's something that we do. And so here at IC Mombasa, we, we are saying that we uphold, that we look forward to true worship. And that is something that we usually, that is something that we usually do. What is value number two? Biblical teaching. Biblical te teaching. You remember me asking you to raise up your uh, Bible high and make a declaration with me. You remember that we have just read from the book of Daniel. And that shows that as a church, number two, we value what? Biblical teaching. Number one, we said, we value what? Uh -huh. Yes. Number one, as we had shared before, that we value together. Just a minute. We value true worship. That together, we come together and worship. Number two, we have said we value what? We value biblical teaching. Number three, what do we value? We value prayer. That means we take time to pray. That is something that we uphold. That is something that we hold dear. That is something that guides us here as a church. I know when we started the service, we said, let's pray. Why? Because for us, prayer is of importance. And it's something that we encourage each other to lead a prayerful life. And so is the encourage, is encouragement to you that even you, as a member of ICC Mombasa Kids Church, that you also need to be prayerful. And so we said, one, true worship. Two, we said biblical teaching. And three, we are saying prayer. Number four, the work of the Holy Spirit. That means we recognize that the Holy Spirit is at work in our day and age. And so it is a value that we uphold, that we seek out the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so we seek to see what God's Spirit is saying to us, and we seek to walk in obedience to what the Holy Spirit is leading us. Yes, right there, even at home, you know, while you're at school, while you're doing many things in many, many places, the God's Spirit speaks to you. The Holy Spirit actually does what speaks to you. And some of us don't even, have not even acknowledged the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Sometimes we think it's our own thinking. Sometimes we think it's our own, um, I don't know, it's our own heart saying things or our own intuitions. But if we become attuned to listening to God, then we can hear his spirit speaking to us. And so we've, sp we've spoken about how many values, four values. We started with one, true worship. Then we said biblical teaching. Then we said prayer. Now we are at uh -huh, the work of the Holy Spirit. So number five, individual worth, meaning that we value individuals. We value each other. And that's why we usually say, if there are people that you can invite, invite so that you can have church together. We appreciate you for being part of International Christian Center, Kids Church, International Christian Center, Mombasa, Kids Church, you are part of us. And so we recognize individuals and we love them. Individuals means uh, you by yourself as you are. And so that's an individual. And so we value you and we value individual worth and we encourage people to come to God or to come to church or to be part of, yes, be part of this God's family because even God, God asks us to come to him as, as we are individually. Is that fine? Yes. And so we've said what? True worship. We've said what? Biblical teaching. We've said what? Prayer. We've said what? The work of the Holy Spirit. And number five, we've said what? Individual worth. To number six, our value number six. What is our value number six? Our value number six says healthy relationships. That means we value, we cherish relationships. How we um, relate one with another. How we, how we live, how we coexist, how we, yes, how we um, move around each other. We cherish those, we cherish friendships, we cherish relations, we cherish, um, yeah, that, that whole sense of not being ourselves, but being around others and thriving together with others. That is something that we uphold as a value. And that's something that we encourage ourselves to build and to have. To build and have what? Healthy relationships. Relationships that can allow us to be able to have others speak into our lives. Others mold us, others shape us, others, um, yeah, encourage us to be more and more of who God calls us to be. Because we cannot thrive on our own as individuals, no? We are saying that we need to do this together and together we can be able to be all that God calls us to, to be. Yes, number seven. Are you ready for number seven? We value lost people. That means we don't just sit and say we are fine. No, we seek out 
those who do not know Jesus, those who have not yet come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, those who have not received Jesus to be their personal savior. Yes, we say that there are other kids in your neighborhood, there are other kids, schoolmates, there are other kids, classmates, there are other kids all around you, friends, your relatives, people that you know, or kids that you know in one way or another that do not know Jesus. And what do we do? We say that we value, we value the lost, and we seek to bring them to this understanding of living a godly life or living a life that is surrendered to who? To Jesus Christ. And so, seeking out the lost is a value that we uphold. Is that fine? Now let me ask you, where are we? We're in value number? We're in value number? We've just done seven. And so we're in value number? Eight. And number eight says teamwork. Why teamwork? Because we notice that as a team, uh, we all get to attain and move forward as people that God calls us, um, has called us uh, in this day and age. And so, one, as International Christian Center Mombasa Kids Church, we are a team. That means the teachers that you have with you, the fellow kids that you have with you, all of us constitute of a team. And we want to function as a team so that we can do everything that God has called us to. Yes, God has called us to do so many things. Like we've just said, to reach out to the lost kids in, in our city, to be able to pray for our nation, to be able to evangelize. That means spread God's word and be able to share the Bible and what it says to many other kids all over the world. And for us to do that, we can't do it when we are divided. No, we need to be a team, a fully functional team, a people that are together in what they do and in what they say so that we can be together in achieving all of this. Are you ready for value number nine? Value number nine says creativity and innovation. That means whatever we do, we do it from a point of being creative. That means we seek for new ways. We seek for better ways. We seek for ways that can be able to impact the society, for ways that can be able to better the lives of other children around us, better the life of our friends, better the life of our families, and innovatively seek to do. What does innovation mean? Innovation means seeking new ways, new ways to do what we do, and we do it in value number 10, which is excellence. We do it how? We do it excellence, excellently. And that means we seek to be creative and innovative even in the things that we do. And then after we have been creative and innovative, those things that we set to do, we set to do them excellently. And so you notice, that is value number 10 for us. We are saying excellence. And finally, I know you have seen this, especially with your parents and in big, big people's church, even at your home sometimes. Yes, you've seen something called C2. I bet even some of you are part of your C2s. We encourage people to be in small groups, in small groups where they can be mentored, where they can be able to grow, where they can be able to connect. You remember how we said um, last week that our, our mission statement says connecting people to God and to each other. Is that fine? We are saying that this connection happens when we are in small groups. That's, that's, those are the ones that we call caring communities or other C2s. And so I know some of you by default or by virtue of having your parents are part of caring communities. But even as you grow in church, you will end up becoming or starting or even being a, a crucial member of a care, caring communities. Why? Because us having small groups as a church is something that we hold as a value. And so these are the values that we uphold as who? As International Christian Center Mombasa Kids Church, or rather, International Christian Center Mombasa Church. These are the values that guide us. These are the values that act as our riverbanks, that allow us to flow in the way that God has called us to flow. And we believe that as we uphold these values, we are going to be everything that God has called us to be. And so, one more time, I would like us to do a rundown to these values. We say number one is what? True worship. Number two is what? Prayer. Number three is what? No, number two is Biblical teaching. Number three is prayer. Number four is the work of the Holy Spirit. Number five is individual worth. Number six is health and relationship. Number seven is lost people. Number eight is what? Teamwork. Number nine we say this creativity and what? Innovation. Number ten is excellence. And number eleven is small groups. And so you realize these are our values. These are the values that shape us and lead us into everything that God is saying. And we know as we uphold these values, as we look through them, as we uphold these standards, as we uphold these principles, we are going to be the kind of church that God has called us to be. And even you there individually, if you uphold these values, you're going to be the child of God that God has called you to be in this day and age. Is that fine? Is that fine? I hope that is fine and clear. And so... 
today for our memory verse, we are going to get this. It's a portion of scripture, actually three verses, from the book of Psalm. From the book of Psalm. From the book of Psalm. Psalm is just right after Job, before Proverbs in the Old Testament. Psalm chapter 1, and we are reading from verse 1 to 3. Psalm chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3. And what, that is, what does it say? It speaks about a man who stands, who sits, who walks, who stands, and who does not sit. And so let's read together and see. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand. Eh? From walking now we are standing. Nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the way of mockers. Uh -huh. Verse 2 says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law he meditates day and night. His delight is in the law, the word of God. And on this word he meditates on it. That means he reads it. He memorizes it. He makes it part of his life day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water. And so we're asking ourselves, how many here would like to look as green as a tree planted by the streams of water? I hope you've raised your hand. And how do we do so? We do so in the same way that we've been told up there. Blessed is the man who does not walk. That means, why does he not walk? Because he has principles in the counsel of the wicked. Or stand. Why does he not stand in the way of sinners? Because he has principles. Or sit in the seat of mockers. Why does he not sit in the seat of mockers? Because he has principles. Principles, as we are saying, are the ones that guide us to everything that God has called us, to where God wants us to be, and to all the things that God is saying in our lives. Is that right? Is that right? And so, through this week, here's an assignment, here's some homework. Go through and reflect through these verses in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. And I know that even as you think through them, that the Holy Spirit is going to minister and speak to you, and you're going to gain more understanding on God's word and on the principles that he'd like you to uphold in your life. Is that right? Is that right? And so, at this moment, I like you to stand so that we can do what? We can dedicate, or rather, we can declare the praises of God. Are you ready? I ask, stand, stand on your feet, on your feet, on your feet. And here is the International Christian Center Mombasa. Worship team, even as they lead us in this declaration. <music>
and now children it's time for us to give money for jesus are you ready to give money for jesus remember we worship god with our giving yes so ask mommy and daddy to help you give money for jesus for those of us who are in kenya our pay bill number is 488508 for those who are in kenya pay bill number is 488508 08 If you're not in Kenya do not worry the details are on your screen so ask mommy and daddy to help you give money for Jesus let's go and worship God with our giving Woo! I hope you've declared the praises of God. I hope you've lifted up um, the name of God on high. And even after that that you go to settle down and give of your offerings and sacrifices. That means give money for Jesus. Have you done so? Yeah. And so that brings us to the end of our sermon and service today. I hope you enjoyed uh, what we've learned today. I hope you're going to live by the values that God has called you to live by and you're going to be like Yeah, be like the child that God has called you to be in this in this day and age. And so that is it from us and with the rest of the teachers all we wish you is a great week ahead, blessings in everything that you're going to do, that God will watch over you, keep you, sustain you and carry you through until we get to see each other. Where? Either in our in person services, where at at Likoni, at Ambaraki campus or at our Lifegate campus or right here at our online campus but with all of that all we say is god bless you be with you and see you on the next one bye